Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today we'll be taking a look at a small cap coin that you guys have requested us to review and that coin is BitBay. BitBay is currently ranked 178 on the market cap and it's a very ambitious project who is basically taking on eBay, the world's biggest online marketplace. So if it comes close anywhere to achieving their goal, their market cap is going to explode, making this definitely a coin worth being aware of. To learn more about BitBay, keep watching this video. Welcome back. First of all, let me clarify that the project we are reviewing today is BitBay Market, not BitBay Exchange. Both of these are cryptocurrencies projects, but one is an exchange and the other is an online marketplace. The project we are looking at today is BitBay Marketplace. So if you are checking this website out for yourself, please make sure you go to bitbay.market. Now, traditionally in an online marketplace, there is the seller, the user, and a middleman like eBay. The problem with middleman marketplaces like eBay currently are, firstly, they charge very high fees as much as a 13% commission. Secondly, there is a risk of fraud and buying faulty products. The third is a lack of privacy where the merchant and the middleman both have access to your complete details like your full name, your address and your credit card details. The Fourth is the lack of customizations where any trading you do is basically very simple buy and sell trade on the spot and there is very little options to customize or change those trades. BitBay aims to correct all those problems by creating the world's first decentralized marketplace. The website itself doesn't have a white paper, what they have instead is a page that displays their core features. So we won't be exploring much tech today, which means a shorter review, but nonetheless there are many interesting features of this project that we need to introduce to you. The first feature that I want to introduce to you is their double deposit escrow. Now, typically, if you were hiring a freelancer to do some work, you would pay the fees upfront into what is known as an escrow account. So this is a fund that is frozen until the end of the transactions. And when the fund is frozen in the escrow, neither you or the freelancers gets the money until the work is completed and the work is verified by you. Then the funds in the escrow are released to the freelancers. Now this works well for freelancing work where the product is a service and typically there is a lot of communication between the freelancer and the user. However, with physical products that you purchase on eBay, it becomes harder because not only is there less communication, but you need to not only protect the user or the buyer, you also need to protect the merchant who is often subject to a lot of false complaints from people who claim that they never received the goods or received faulty goods and they want a refund. To combat this problem, BitPay employs what is known as a double deposit escrow. In this double deposit escrow, both parties, both the buyer as well as the merchant, has to deposit an escrow fee into the escrow um, fund. The fee that they deposit can be anywhere from a small amount unto as large as the actual price of the purchase. If something goes wrong, potentially the entire escrow will be confiscated and lost. So basically both parties have to verify that they are satisfied with the transaction before the escrow amount is released back to them. Now other marketplaces will employ other means such as KYC and reputation system to incentivize good trades. BitPay, BitBay will also be employing those features as well. The actual escrow amount that you see on this screen is just a deposit for the trade. It is not the actual transaction um, cost. The actual trade amount is a separate um, amount altogether. So in this case, the escrow amount is always done in Bay tokens, but the actual trade where you actually buy something from the merchant, that can be done with any currency. Now I see this um, double escrow as a potentially double-edged sword and the reason I say that is because firstly even though the double escrow makes the transaction more secure but it means that the seller or the merchant has to offer a deposit up front. So essentially if you are a merchant who's selling 1000 products in that day you would have to put down 1000 escrow deposits. This is huge and not many merchants may be able to afford that and it certainly might turn some of them away to other sites like eBay that require no deposit. 
Also, the fact that my escrow may be confiscated, whether I'm a user or a merchant, that doesn't make me feel very good because the other party may also be trying to do the right thing. But what if a third party, like the delivery man or someone else in the process, did something wrong where the transaction did not complete? And so the fault wasn't with either party, it wasn't with the buyer, it wasn't with the seller. But nonetheless, they can't come to an agreement about the outcome. As a result, both of them would lose their escrow. So the fact that I could lose my escrow even though I didn't do anything wrong doesn't really sit well with me. The second feature that I want to introduce with you is the unbreakable contracts. And this is done through the use of smart contracts. Now, this isn't a particularly brand new technology. For most of us who have been in the blockchain scene for a while, we understand that smart contracts are the core building blocks of any blockchain projects. But it is a feature that when you apply it to trade in the online marketplace, it becomes a new feature. Smart contracts means that the agreements between two parties can happen without further intervention or a need for a middleman. The agreement is also secure, enforceable and untemperable. This is bringing the advantages of the blockchain to the marketplace. Furthermore, BitBay has also allowed users to create custom contracts, changing how they define the agreement and allowing for a wide range of customization. Now, following up, from the point of unbreakable contracts is the next feature of being a decentralized market. Because there is no middleman, there is no need for high fees. So with BitBay, the use of the software is completely free. Instead of high transaction fees ranging between 5 to 13% in current online merchants or middlemen, the transaction fees for trade will be very low, costing less than 1 cent. So it's basically almost free. I think that having very low fees can be very attractive to users, but you have to balance this with the coin value worth. Because basically transactions are the way that this project earns money, because while Bay tokens are used in the escrow, the idea is that you get the escrow amount back, so it's not actually being used. Now, if each transaction is super cheap, then as a user, all I need to do is buy one coin and I can do multiple transactions or many, many transactions with that one coin. So there is no need for me as a user to buy more coins, which means there is no demand for coins on the market. And no demand means that the currency price is going to find itself hard to rise. So it's a trade-off here being between being attractive to the users with very low transaction costs versus having difficult traction for token price. You could potentially end up with a situation where the project is taking off but the token price doesn't reflect that. The next feature which is still in the works is the dynamic pack. So one of the major setbacks to using cryptocurrency in the marketplace is the volatility of cryptocurrency. So to counter this and provide stability, they are proposing what is called a rolling pack, where a user will get two balances of liquid and reserves. So when the market starts to crash, for example, BitBay will forcibly deflate the coin supply by freezing users' accounts and setting some of their coins aside as a reserve. They try to make this fair for all users by deciding the amount that is, froze, that is going to be freezed based on the user or when the user receives and sends their coins. But vice versa, if the price was to rise suddenly and dramatically, example from $1 to $2, so some of your coins will get frozen. So for example, if you had 100 tokens, each worth $1, so that's the total spend value of $100. Freezing half of that would mean that you still have 100 spend value, but 50% of your tokens were frozen to be released later. BitPay doesn't actually control the process of freezing the tokens. The decision on the target price to be frozen is chosen by the community and the community can also choose to make the whole process automated. Again, I do understand and appreciate the principle behind making a stable trading environment. But I also see this as a potential double-edged sword. What if the market crashed and I saw it coming at the start and I wanted to sell my coins but now I can't because they are locked in and I can't sell them. Also, the model works on the assumption that the user is less competent at the community and making decisions which some users may disagree. And the market also, um, this whole uh, system works on the assumption that the market will recover. What if the market didn't recover or just for this project, the project itself didn't recover and even though that's unlikely, it's worth considering when you are going to invest in the project. If the market didn't recover and the coin price kept falling, theoretically, your frozen coins will never be released. And in fact, as the price keeps falling, there is a potential that more of more of your coins may actually get frozen to forcibly deflate the supply more and more. 
I personally don't like that a project gets to freeze my assets whenever they feel it suits the best purposes of the project, not necessarily my own individual best purposes. I am forced to put the well-being of the project above myself, and some investors may not like that. The next interesting feature they have is what is called exotic spending. Uh, this is multiple custom features that are built into their AI, which includes a dead man switch where coins can be preset to be returned to the rightful owners after a predetermined time lock. So it's useful for multi-signature businesses or employment contracts, etc. Uh, another feature they have is what is known as notary and burn, which utilizes the accountability of the blockchain to verify document ownership. Another feature they have is the freezing coin features that we just discussed. Another feature of the project is their decentralized voting, and we're going to cover both this and together with their staking mechanism. Now, BitBay system runs similar to a proof of stake, so you can stake your coins and they promise you that they will give back at least 1% every year, and they are hoping really to give more, maybe 3 to 5% in reality. They also promise that stakers will get 20 coins as a reward for each block of information that they confirm. 1% in this case is not a lot. In fact, your bank account probably gives you a higher interest. So what you'll be really staking your money on here is that the inflation of the coin, meaning that the coin price will rise. In terms of voting, the main purpose to regulate the dynamic pack technology discussed earlier is to vote. Uh, it's very easy to vote. The UI requires no coding skill, but there is a cost for each vote. And basically, the cost for each vote is 0.00005554 Bay tokens, which in today's uh, market cost of the token would be equivalent to 0.00000416 US dollars. So, negligible cost, really. So why do they need to charge for each vote? Uh, explain on your website, requiring a fee and using staking to inject votes into the blockchain helps to regulate and protect the vote from spam and minimizes short-term manipulation. And this makes a whole lot of sense because sometimes people with malicious intent will jump on to try and disrupt the system. So for example, a bot could try to vote um, to monopolize the vote to freeze people's funds and then only release it at a ridiculously low coin price. To prevent that, charging something prevents bots from doing mass voting because it will cost them too much money. Many other projects also employ similar methods to prevent malicious spamming by bots. But again, in this case, the economics kind of worry me a little bit. I understand that they want to make things attractive for users and charge a very negligible vote cost, but the downside is, as they say in themselves, the vote itself almost costs nothing to cast a vote. So at the current price, I could cast 1 million votes for $4.16 USD. Uh, $4 USD. That doesn't sound right, right? Because the whole idea of charging for the vote is so that it will be too costly to spam the votes. But in this case, the votes itself cost almost nothing. So it, would be, it wouldn't cost that much to spam it. Um, I wish we had a white paper so I could dive deeper into the details and then see is there a limit to how many votes each person can have etc that might you know um, prevent this monopolizing uh, but I, I don't know guys the I hope I'm missing something here and this whole video is really just my thoughts on my own journey and my own considerations I have just reading through what is available on the website and just reading through that I want to say um, some of the numbers are making sense to me. Okay, I love the concept of what they're trying to achieve because I love decentralization and blockchain and I really want to like this project. But um, there are some concerns that I do have. The last three features um, that they have that are pretty cool is about their security. The three features overlap. In fact, when you click on each of these features on their feature website page, um, all three links lead you to the same page called Advanced Security. So then we're going to cover all of these three features together. Firstly, they are boasting an unhackable wallet that will use two different keys and steganography. Steganography, which they explain, is hiding your password in an image instead of a data file. So if a hacker was to hack a data file, uh, just hacking that file alone, he will get your password. But if a hacker was to hack um, the image, what it will get is an image. And the image will mean something to you, but it wouldn't mean something to the hacker. So even though he got your image, it doesn't mean that he got your password. Also, all communications through the system is encrypted, and this includes both messaging on BitMessage, which is their messaging app, 
all through emails. In fact, if you use BitMessage, which is their messaging system, they even provide Tor. For those of you who don't know what Tor is, Tor, you can think of it like an improved decentralized versions of VPN. So this is to help you to hide your identity and be truly anonymous. So I really do like their privacy and security features. I think even if they weren't a marketplace, even just as a messaging app, I would be interested to use BitMessage. This is their team guys, as you can see it's a big team. They have nicely split up the team into core team, developers, marketing and communications, design team, community team managers. So it's a very well balanced team. Uh, if you click on each picture, they will give you a short description of their role, but it's not really a resume. It's at best a description of what their role in the project is. I'll read for you the first couple of um, descriptions. Their lead developer is David Zimbeck, and it says when you hover over his picture, David is the lead developer for the BitBay Hello client, which is the industry's leader in trustless smart contract technology. The second resume or second uh, description, the applications manager is called Craig Clausen, and when you hover over his profile, it says, client testing, support, and smart contract experimentation, part of upper management with David and John. Uh, and that's all it says, so you don't know much more about them. They do have LinkedIn profiles. I went to look up David's profile, and this is David Zimbeck's profile. It says that he graduated from the school of hard knocks, so that's good. I mean, oh, well, that, that's okay. A lot of successful people never finish university, which is what I'm assuming happened here. Uh, it also says that he's the CEO of Daftonia from the year 2000 to present, so that's good. He's the CEO of other companies, and there are other uh, companies in his resumes, if you scroll down, including BitBay itself, BitHello, and the CEO of Digistar Films, etc. So um, I googled Daftonia to try and understand him a little bit better. And on the first page of the Google, there really isn't any information of Daftonia. There is one link towards the end of the page that actually is Cooperation Wiki. And it says here that Daftonia Inc. filed as an Articles of Corporation in the state of California and is no longer active. This corporation entity was filed approximately nine years ago on Monday, March 30th, 2009 as record recorded in documents filed with California Secretary of State. Um, but it was clearly stated in his LinkedIn profile that uh, he was CEO of Daftonia from year 2000 to present. So um, I don't know, maybe he was very busy and forgot to update his resume for the past nine years, maybe? So feel free to go through the rest of the team's profile in your own time, guys. Uh, they don't have any advisors or investors or partners listed and I don't want to be too negative because I feel I've been a bit hard on the project already but those things are things that we do like to see generally when we review a blockchain project. One good thing I want to point out is that they have a working product. You can download their marketplace kind in Windows, Mac or Linux and they also have several wallets which is where you stake from. So it's good to see that the project is moving ahead. They have a community branch of the website, which is much like a forum where you can ask very detailed questions. Uh, I basically got all my information about staking, etc. from their community forum, as I found basically no information of it on the actual website. They don't have a white paper, which is why it's very hard to um, go into the nitty gritty of their, de of their features. And uh, oftentimes I found that the, f the community forum was a much more useful place to get uh, detailed information. This is their roadmap. It's a rather brief roadmap that uh, shows the first quarter of this year. I'm sure they did things earlier than that, but it really the on the website it starts from the first quarter of this year and it runs to September of this year. So only the third quarter of this year. And then after that it says and much more to come. There's also a disclaimer on their website that says our roadmap is an indication of what we expect to release. It is not a promise to our investors as we expand our team priorities may change. Upcoming things that we can expect this month and next month are Client version 1.32, which includes native Mac version, multilingual website launch, higher template release, and poker site. Hmm, poker site, that's interesting because I thought this was a marketplace project. Uh, I found this article from a few months ago that mentioned Bay's multi sig poker, a revolutionary multi signature secure poker. It's a Texas Hold'em game that uses the Bay token, but the 
Article also said that uh, Texas Hold'em Poker website is completely independent of BitBay. One of our web wallet developers simply wanted to expand upon the web wallet's potential. The website's owner will only utilize BitBay as the base currency for users. So I'm not sure whether this is the same project that they are working on when they talk about poker being released in May, or is it a different project on since the, um, the project that is listed on their roadmap is listed under their ownership on their official website so we will have to see i guess finally taking a look at pricing let's go to the charts you will notice that we are using coin codex guys instead of coin market cap coin codex is our new favorite market monitoring website it allows you to do several things including star your favorite coins so that each time you open the website it begins by showing you your favorite coin first and many other interesting features so if you have five minutes make sure you check out coincodex.com now, as you can see, BitBay is not a new project. It's been around for a while. At its peak back in January of this year, it was sitting at 37 cents. Currently, it's down all the way to 7 cents, so it has a lot of room to recover. If it ever revisited that high point again, that's over 5x gains. And also, they've just released staking, so that's not always an attractive feature for any project for token investors. They are also only on small exchanges now, not even KuCoin, so there's definitely a lot of room to grow for this project. The one big thing I foresee for them will be the competition in the space. You see, they have been around for a little while, and since they have started over the course of the last six months, you know, they have entered other competition like Syscoin. In fact, Syscoin has come up and really overtaken them. Syscoin market cap is currently over three times, almost four times their current market cap. So for some reason, whether it's the tech or the team or the marketing or other reasons, many investors have somehow chosen to invest in other similar projects instead of BitBay. So it's going to take a lot of hard work to chase back that market presence that they had before. Only time will tell if this project is going to be a success. For myself personally, I've decided I'm going to sit out for now. But definitely all the best to the team and everyone involved in this coin. That's it guys, that's our thoughts on the project BitBay. Leave us a comment below to let us know what you think of BitBay. We always love a robust discussion. Also give us a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. And finally, do consider joining our Telegram group to get the latest updates in the market. It's a very engaging group and the updates come from the whole community, not just me. And I must say we have a really awesome and healthy group who give great advice and encouragement. There's no shilling or farting going on in the group. So do drop in to say hi. Our link is in the description box below. Alright guys, I'll love you and leave you for now. Until next time, take care and goodbye.